Welcome back, everyone. It's one of the biggest economic drivers in northern Nevada. We're talking about the massive industrial park just east of Reno. It's home to Tesla, to Switch, to Google, and more than 100 other big businesses. That's right. Now, we hear about the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center all the time. Right. But there's a story behind this giant piece of Nevada's economy that we hadn't heard about. Mm -hmm. It's a never-been-told story of its owner, Roger Norman. Now, it turns out that's by design. Norman is not at all what you'd expect to find in a billionaire land developer. He's very private, even shy, and reluctant to accept any praise for the empire he's built, despite some real personal adversity. But he's decided to tell his story just once, by the way, and it's a story you'll see only here on Channel You look over there across on the other side where the snow is, that's exactly what it'll look like. <laughs> For the first time ever, Roger Norman speaks publicly about his creation, an industrial park bigger than Reno and Sparks combined, carved out of the desert. It was just, uh, just kind of mountains and valleys. It started as a $20 million gamble, now the multi-billion dollar epicenter of northern Nevada's tech industry. And when Roger Norman looks out at this kingdom he built... Oh, I love the way it come out. And the idea that there'll be 30 or 35,000 people working out here, I think that's just the greatest. Yeah, go left here. Norman takes us along the drive he makes three times a week, through the winding roads connecting Tesla's Gigafactory and the new Switch Citadel. Now that switch right there. You can hear the pride in his voice but you'll never hear him brag. I, I've just been lucky with the right people and, uh, and somehow I've been lucky in making the right decisions. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with the team. <laughs> his team is where he gives most of the credit and all of the public appearances. I negotiate from the shadows. You gotta have the guys that can pull it off. And that's the, the guys up front, Lance Gilman. Chris Thompson, Bob Seder. That team tells it a little differently. If anybody tried to smoke him, he knew what was going on. Gilman describes Norman as a human calculator, constantly working the numbers and quietly reading the people around him. That plus the ability to move mountains, literally. He could tell you how much cubic yardage was in a hill, how many truckloads it take, how many uh, truck uh, trips it would take, how much the drivers are making, and what it's going to cost to move a half a million cubic yards of material. So I'm out there playing mouthpiece and selling, and Bob's back over there writing contracts and doing the stuff. But Roger is watching every single thing that happens, and then he either blesses it or it's no. Do you think that any of this would have been possible without him? No. No. He's a leader. He's a champion. So he puts those of us out in front to, to talk the talk and walk the walk. But he's managing the cash. And while he's reluctant to talk about it. That's my dad's first car. His road to success is remarkable. As a military kid, Norman lived all over the country, and money was tight. He started working at a young age. My first job was a, in a feed store. I, I uh, sacked coal. And uh, that was a fun job. My dad had a gas station, and I worked there with, with him for a long time, and then uh, he had a little trouble with alcohol. So. so I took over full time. He was just 15 years old, but young Roger had a knack for business. He expanded the gas station into an auto body shop. It was so successful that I had to build another shop. Two shops turned into several, and Norman started investing in real estate. That was successful, too. So I took the shops, and I gave all of the shops to uh, the guys that had been running them. And I gave them everything. What made you do that? I was making money in uh, real estate, and I was happier in real estate than I was fixing cars. So I'd moved on, and they were still stuck there. They deserved it. This unusual spirit of generosity in business has earned him the loyalty and love of his team. They say they're more like a family. 
They don't have an office. Instead, they hold meetings at Norman's kitchen table. Is that the way you see it? <laughs> That's the way I see it. Yeah. Meeting Roger Norman, and I get a little emotional over it, but it, it, uh, it set me on a path that has been blessed. It's easy to see the camaraderie born of 40 years in business together, building projects like the South Meadows development that houses IGT. And then, of course, the massive undertaking of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center. So we came out over here and got up high, I don't remember where, and looked around and I'm thinking, my God, you know, I thought South Meadows was a big project. This thing was endless. And he looked over at me and he said, Gilman, are you sure? And I said, Roger, I'm pretty sure this is the place to be. All their projects involve a lot of trust because while Norman has business acumen in spades, he needs help in other areas. I don't read or write. <laughs> and that's kind of tough. Kind of a pain for them because they they have to read me contracts and stuff like that, and it's very time-consuming for the for the team. My recommendation is, it is there's no such thing as too much education. It's a lesson he's already passing on to his youngest, Sophia. His other two kids are grown, successful professionals. You've heard of Double R Boulevard. Well, it's named for Roger and his son, also named Roger. The kids have quite the role model to follow, but his journey hasn't been without its stumbles. Norman has lost everything twice. I've been the American dream three times. I've been broke twice, flat broke. Mm, it's terrible, I don't recommend it. <laughs> everything you'd want. It's a far cry from where he finds himself now living in the former Pennington mansion in the hills of West Reno, a perfect spot to survey the land and plan his next move. It's fun to have this team together and then look for something new, whereas we'll be moving right into something else now. Can you give us a hint about what's coming? I would love to, but I don't think I better say much of anything on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he did tell me that whatever they do next, at least we know it'll be here in the Reno area. Right. Interesting guy. No, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. Now, I asked him for secrets to his success, right. and, and he was actually even reluctant to give them at all because he's really, really humble. But he did say this, surround yourself with good people, pay good wages, and then train them yourself. And this one I thought was funny. Never gamble more than you can afford to lose. First of all, that was a fantastic story. So props to you, our Thank photographers, you. Uh, Vance, and our executive producer, Zach, for working on that. It was a big team effort. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and and I, I think that people don't really realize that this man here truly transformed Northern Nevada forever. That's right. The work that he did. That's right. I mean, this gamble that he took, $20 million, putting it down on 100,000 acres of empty desert, and that brought Tesla, right. and that brought the Tesla effect, and made all these changes. And yeah, you won't hear that from him, but, yeah. but it's, it's pretty amazing. And if I can have time just for one more quick question here. This is a first television interview for him ever. Ever. How were you able to get it? I ran into a member of his team at a Christmas party and asked, and a few months later they said, oh, he's ready to tell it. Yeah. That's how that happened. We're so thankful he did. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm sorry. That's great.